Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's day two of Truck World. I'm exhausted from yesterday. It took a lot out of me. But I'm awake. I'm here. I'm about to leave for the, the International Center. We're gonna go do it all over again. We're just gonna push through it. It's okay. I'm not used to being on my feet all day, but that's okay. We'll get used to it quick. My body adapts quickly to stuff. And plus the weather is a lot warmer here too. So my body's like, what happened? I thought it was still April 3rd winter. Like, no, we're in Toronto now. They only have two winters here. Man, I'm trouble. we have three. We might even be getting a fourth this year. From what I hear while we're out here in uh, Toronto, they're getting another snowstorm back home. Crying out loud. What a day. What a year. What in everything. Man, I, got, I need to get a coffee in me. So after the first day of Truck World, my first impression was that it is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. It's a massive venue with a lot of exhibitors. It's huge. Anybody who's anybody, all the big guys, all the names that you see all over the roads, all the trucking companies, and plus a whole bunch of people that I've never heard of and all kinds of different companies that make all these really cool little gadgets and and uh, there was this one company that I saw oh man I'll have to show you this this was super cool okay they didn't ask me to give a shout out or anything but their their products where is it here yeah this is it check this out I'm giving them a shout out because I think this is the coolest thing ever this is a self greaser so instead of you know stopping and uh, you know greasing your truck at regular intervals, you know, crawling underneath there in the snow, crawling underneath there all day and greasing it with a grease gun. This system goes onto your truck and it pumps grease through your entire truck by itself on a regular interval. All you gotta do is make sure that there's grease in it. Like it's got this little, uh, the lube pump here and it's got distribution valves. Like you guys should really go check this out. When I buy a truck one day, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get this. It just saves you that downtime, saves you from having to get your hands all dirty. Not that we mind getting our hands dirty, no worry. But saves you from one job to do and takes one thing off your back that's always, you know, oh shoot, I gotta grease the truck. Or, oh, I forgot to grease the truck, shoot. No, this thing does it for you. It's just installed on there in just regular intervals. It just greases your truck on its own. Crazy, right? I always tell my wife that, you know, we have all these awesome ideas in our heads, right? I could be an entrepreneur. Definitely, I have all of these business ideas in my head, but if you can think of it, it's probably already been created and is probably already being made and produced. There, the people are amazing in the world today. It's almost anything you can think of, you can get. So I didn't know that there was an automatic greasing system. So it's stuff like that at Truck World, that, uh, that's one example of, of something that I was really impressed with. I, I went by their booth, I was like, that is super cool. You know, one less thing you gotta worry about on the road. I'll give you their website here if you wanna go check them out. Uh, the company's called, uh, that's their FLD Components, right? Uh, there, Flow Components, so that's not a D, that's an O. www.flowcomponents.com. I'll go check them out. I mean, that's super cool. And I'll give you more examples today of uh, really interesting gizmos, gadgets, and innovations that make trucking just easier, better, and you know, take some of the burden and stress off of your back. One less thing to remember, it's super cool. Anyways. Enough talking, let's get to the show. First stop before we go is the hotel lobby. It's the closest coffee I could find, it's Starbucks. It's not Tim's, but it's okay. It's okay. My body will forgive me. So long as I put coffee in it, it will forgive me. Fresh sunlight. So I'm here at Truck World Day 2 and we have a special guest all the way from Germany. Hello to Germany from Canada and hello to Canada from Germany. His name is Martin, which is the same name as my dad. That's awesome. So he's here. You're here visiting uh, Canada, just yes. on vacation. Yes. 
and heard that we would be a truck world. So he said, why not add this to his itinerary on his vacation? Came here and so said hello. I was watching uh, his channel and uh, he mentioned that this uh, truck show would be here today. And uh, I thought just uh, drop by and say hello to him. And he bought me lunch. Thank you for that, by the way. Uh -huh. That was really nice. And so, his sweater. Yeah, and uh, he was actually telling me that we can get into that Scania truck here and actually take a look at that. That's a European truck that they have at the show here. And we can show you guys the interior of it. I've got an interview coming up here right away with uh, Truck World. But uh, maybe after that, are you going to be here all day yet? or I can wait. Yeah? Sure. Maybe after the interview, then we'll go and uh, take a look at that Scania really quick. And he can probably give you a lot more uh, insight into them because in Germany, they actually have Scania trucks on the roads. This truck here is the first Scania truck I've ever seen in person in my life. I've always wanted to see a European truck, so it's pretty cool. But For me, it's a regular sight. I see them every day. <laughs> That is awesome. And he was telling me stories about the Autobahn. So one day I'm going to go to Germany and he says that I could, I could rent a car and they'll let me drive on the Autobahn. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but... <laughs> Without any speed limit. No speed limit, yeah. You can go as fast as the car can go and you're not breaking any laws, so that'll be a vlog. Go to Germany and make some Autobahn vlogs. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should we go to Germany? And I guess a lot of your German followers would uh, invite you to visit them. Yeah, I probably have a whole bunch of you that I can go and hang out with while I'm there. Maybe I'll let you guys drive on the Autobahn because you guys know how to do nah, it. Nah, you need to, you need to <laughs> try at least. Yeah. In Germany, there's a lot more training that goes into just getting a regular car license, apparently. So they have a lot more training than we do. But he says if I go there, they'll they'll trust me and they'll give me a car and I can legally go on the Autobahn and see how fast it can go. That sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> Anyways, it was very nice meeting you. And uh, we'll see you again, hopefully, one day. Yes. Thanks for watching. It's been another long day here again. I really like the carpets that they got in here, eh? Any little highways. Make sure you stay in your own lane. <laughs> so everything's pretty much cleared out here right now. Uh, tomorrow's the big day. They say that uh, tomorrow they got this RC truck presentation, like remote controlled scale replica model trucks. I'm really excited to see what that's all about. Look at this. Leon Electric. A lot of electric trucks. The majority of them are still uh, diesel, but uh, every manufacturer brought all their new technology here. I've never even seen this. I don't even know what this is. Have you guys ever seen this truck before? It's got a dash camera built in up there already. That's smart. I think a forward-facing dash camera should come standard on all trucks. I see this cab over Pete over here. He's been inviting me over here to uh, take a look inside. Let's go take a look. I'm allowed to have special access into this truck right now. We're just gonna move the teddy bear out of there. They're not letting everybody take a look inside, but your guy got special access. Because this is a beautiful Peterbilt cab over. Look at this thing. Look at this thing. Got my buddy back there. He vouched for me. <laughs> They're not letting people actually sit in here, but buddy in the back there got me in. Look at this. Beautiful. It looks like brand new. No hood. So the engine in these trucks is right here, right beside you. And you just climb over this, and there's your bed back there. How amazing is that, eh? Feels a little bit more cramped, because the newer trucks, they have uh, a lot of space here, right? Because the engine's out front. In these trucks, you have to put the engine somewhere. Yeah, and this is an old style cab over Peterbilt. Beautiful truck. Like brand new, look at this. Even this is polished, you can see me. 
just in case if you want to see what you look like while you're driving you know you just <laughs> Really nice. So I'm going to try to get out of here very carefully. Very carefully. Don't fall out. So our friend Martin is here. Oh, I'm in the picture. Okay. Yep. <laughs> our the friend. big moment is approaching. Mr. Josh uh, entering a European truck for the first time. First the word will be unhinged. <laughs> a turning point in history. A turning point in history. <laughs> I've never been in a European truck before, but I hear a lot of good things from you guys about Scania. You guys won't stop talking about it, so I'm finally gonna figure out what all the fuss is about and see if you guys are right or not. Okay, first time so, ever getting into a European truck. It's been one of my life dreams. Which, which foot do I use first? I don't know. Okay, a little rough. Should grab this one first, but pretty much. Look, look how the seat will adjust to your weight here. Oh See yeah. That? Oh, there it is. Yeah. It automatically adjusts. So I've been told this is like the Cadillac of trucks. Uh, yeah. This well, I don't know. I'm European. We don't use the well, word the, Cadillac. The, the Cadillac, the, I the, guess, would be like Daimler trucks, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, like the Mercedes-Benz of Mercedes. the, yeah. or the Porsche. There was supposed to be. Well, right? let's, uh, Mercedes is a competitor, so let's say Porsche because it's the same group, Volkswagen. <laughs> okay. Por Porsche of the trucks, yes. Or the Audi. Audi, maybe. Oh, it's really good. And the visibility is fantastic. I mean, can see Josh in a Scania truck. Actually, for me today, it's been the first time to uh, get onto an American truck. So Josh, how does it feel? This thing is pretty amazing. They say it's not the Cadillac of trucks, it's the Mercedes-Benz of trucks. Okay, European. And look at this, you close this, everything is within arm's reach. You rest your elbow on the, the windowsill here, all your buttons right on the steering wheel within easy reach. You don't have to reach forward and strain yourself to reach anything. I can imagine, only imagine the turning radius on this truck, it would turn on a, on a dime. It's got that new truck smell. The European trucks, the, the new truck smell is the same as our new truck smell, if you want to know. <laughs> it smells good. It's beautiful. The finishing touches, the details, everything in here is incredible. Radio, well, what's this up here? Is it radio? I would say so. So Scania is a Swedish brand that has been bought out by Volkswagen. So a German owned Swedish brand and they're going to be selling it in Canada soon through International. So International is going to have the selling rights to it. So you're going to see these on North American roads before you know it. It's pretty exciting to me. And as you can see from up here, there is no nose in front of it. And that's the big difference to US trucks. I yeah, like the big nose though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I would, it would take me a while to get used to it, having no nose in front of me, but I'm sure it would be very nice to, uh, for mobility and especially in cities. Because the big nose in front of the truck, you, you could have a whole car in front of you with a whole family in it, you'd never know. But here, no one hides, nothing can hide here. And the other big difference to US trucks is the sleeper. There's no sleeper. And even if this were a highway truck, then the uh, bed would only be like 30, 40 inches wide. That mm -hmm. would be it. Yeah. You imagine that. I wonder if they'll have bigger sleepers on the North American trucks. We, they, they might need to, to get into our market. We like our space here. We're, we're pampered. So I guess this is what we're going to tell this sales guy. <laughs> Build bigger sleeper cabins. Yep, if you want to sell in North America, you got to give us space. Living space. <laughs> just as I was crawling out here, just look at the attention to detail. Even in there, lights up. 
Closes nice and easy. Don't even have to slam it. It's weird, the European trucks, they have the convex mirror on the top instead of the bottom. We have ours on the bottom instead of the top. For the most part. But we have one bigger version which is